So hello guys, welcome back. And uh, so yeah, in this video, we'll cover some mechanics problems. So it's been a while since I uploaded. So I just so I just randomly picked up a few problems. And so yeah, I guess you guys can give me. So if you guys can give me some suggestions as to what to upload, it'll be easier for me to pick the problems. So yeah, if you guys want to suggest some problems, if uh, you can just you know put it in, you can just pin me on the Telegram group. Okay, so uh, you know if I get the time, I'll just consider that. Or you can just mail me in the email from the description okay so the first problem is basically an nlm problem and and it and yeah it's pretty easy uh, and so we basically have a washer whose mass is given and charge is also given and uh, of course it's placed on an inclined plane whose angle of inclination is given coefficient of and uh, and we have to consider friction as well so we also have a uniform magnetic field which is perpendicular to the inclined plane so um, so basically, if this is the incline, the magnetic field is in this particular direction, perpendicular to the incline. So the washer is released without an initial velocity. So we start from rest, so the value of G is to be taken as 10. So the first question is, uh, determine the value of the steady state velocity of the washer, V vector, after a sufficiently large interval of time. Okay, so that's the first problem. So as they clearly mentioned that the velocity achieves a steady state value. So in simple words, what that means is the velocity vector is constant after a large interval of time or the net force on the body uh, is zero at that instant. Okay, so now we'll just draw the FBD and, and analyze the forces. So, so let's say this is the mass M that we're talking about. Okay, so I'm just going to draw the 2D diagram uh, of this particular plane. Okay. Okay. So what we can do is we can just say that mg sine alpha, which is the force of gravity along the incline, uh, it's along the vertical in our 2D picture. Okay. So, so yeah, this green line is the line along which mg sine alpha is acting. Okay. So now the thing is, as the mass starts to move downwards and starts to gain some velocity, if let's say this is the incline, the mass has a downward velocity. The magnetic field is in this particular direction. So if you do V cross V to figure out the direction of the magnetic force, it's actually into the page, right? So the mass will actually deviate or deflect in this particular direction. So we can just say that uh, at some arbitrary location, the velocity vector was in this particular direction. Okay, so now we can just say when the steady state is reached, the velocity vector is in this particular direction. And it makes an angle beta with that uh, mg sine alpha line. So if the velocity is along this direction, the friction force will be in the opposite direction, trying to retard the motion. So the force of friction will be in this particular direction and the magnitude is mu mg cos alpha and, uh, and mg sine alpha will be along this particular line. So the magnetic force will be perpendicular to the velocity vector and the magnetic field is out of the page. So uh, the velocity and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So this will, so this we can just write it as QVB. Okay, so this is the FBD and uh, now we just have to resolve the forces. So mg sin alpha will be in this particular direction. Okay, so now, um, so these are just three different forces and you can basically draw a vector triangle if you want. So say this is the mu mg cos alpha line or vector and let's, and say this is the QVB vector. So these two are of course perpendicular to each other and the final vector is of course mg sin alpha. Okay so these are the three forces and together they must form a vector triangle if the net force is zero right. Okay so now if you observe uh, this particular angle is actually beta so so which means he, this angle is going to be beta. Okay okay so cos beta is going to be mu divided by tan alpha. So just uh, as is a right angle we can easily write the value of cos beta. So the value of mu is 1 and the value of alpha is 55 degrees. So after you substitute the value of beta turns out to be around 45.5 degrees. Okay. And for velocity, you can figure out tan beta. Okay. So now, so now basically everything else is known and you can solve for the value of V. Okay. So after solving the value of the speed turns out to be 9.35 meters per second. Okay. So yeah, these are the two answers that we had to figure out. So yeah, in the second option, I guess it's the angle that they're asking. So the angle, so they're asking what angle to the line perpendicular to the top of the inclined plane does the washer move in steady state mode? I mean, I guess they are talking about the line that is perpendicular to this particular side. Okay. Which is basically the MG sin alpha line. Okay. So yeah, that's problem one. And the second problem, this is a pathfinder problem. So the question, so in the question, we have a light rigid tube that is welded along a diameter of a uniform cylindrical pipe. So the pipe is actually cylindrical and it has a mass of M and radius of R. So the bead has a mass of M and it's connected by two identical light springs and they each have a force constant K and it can, uh, and, uh, and it can also slide 
along the tube. So the pipe is held motionless on a horizontal floor. The bead is pulled aside a distance of X away from the center of the pipe. And then the pipe and the bead are both released simultaneously. If the cylinder rolls without slipping on the ground, uh, we have to find the acceleration of the center immediately after the system is released. The acceleration of the center of the cylinder um, is what we have to figure out. So basically, you know, just imagine the axis of this particular cylinder. What is the translational acceleration of that axis? So that's what we have to find. Okay. So yeah, try out this problem for a while. All right. So for this problem, it looks like the force and torque approach is going to be much easier. Um, there's also like the power approach, you know, which you can use. So for that, you can just, you know, label all the forces acting on the system and uh, then write down the power due to all the forces and equate it to the rate of change of total mechanical energy of the system. So that's also a common approach uh, in problems like these, where we have to find the acceleration of the system. So basically after t equal to zero. So yeah, so here the the uh, power approach is going to be a bit lengthy because first, you know, write down the kinetic energy of the mass, then the kinetic energy of the cylinder. Okay, so, and then you have to differentiate that. Okay, so that would be the dk by dt, which is the rate of change of kinetic energy. And then you al also have to figure out du by dt, which is the rate at which energy is stored or stored in the springs. And then you have to equate it to the total power. The total power will be contributed by the mg, force of gravity, and the spring forces on the bead and the cylinder. So I'm not going into that approach, but you can try it out. Uh, it's going to get very lengthy that way. So first let's draw the force diagram. So it's clear that the cylinder will start rolling um, counterclockwise, right? So we'll just assume a counterclockwise angular acceleration alpha and a leftward translational acceleration of A. Okay, so let's draw the tube. Okay, so the left spring is actually compressed uh, by a distance of x and the right spring is elongated by the same distance x. So the force on the mass is going to be 2kx to the right and the force on the cylinder is going to be 2kx to the left due to the springs. You know, and uh, let's just say the friction from the ground is to the left. In fact, I don't even think we need to mark the friction. Yeah. So yeah, the force of gravity on the block is going to be, of course, in the downward direction. And this distance is actually x. Okay, and uh, let's just say the interaction force between the between the mass and the tube is actually n. Okay, so that interaction force, I'm just saying it is equal to n. So yeah, now I guess we can just write down a torque equation on the cylinder. So just on the cylinder, excluding the mass. So in that situation, the counterclockwise torque due to n is going to be nx uh, about the instantaneous center. Okay, so if we do that, uh, we'll have to consider the torque due to this 2kx and the torque due to the interaction force, which is n. So due to 2kx, it is 2kx multiplied by the radius. And due to n, it is going to be n into x. So in total, it becomes 2kx times r plus uh, n times x, uh, or basically 2kr plus n times x. And this would be equal to the moment of inertia about the IC, which is 2mr squared times alpha. And alpha we can write it as a by r. So this just becomes 2mar. Okay. So yeah, this is the torque equation about the ICOR. So this would be the first equation. So now we just need to get rid of the normal reaction force. Okay. So for that, we can write down a y direction f equal to ma equation on the block. So what's the downward acceleration? So uh, in the y direction, of course, the mass is constrained to move with the same acceleration as that of the tube, right? Tube of the cylinder. And the acceleration of the tube at this particular location is going to be x into alpha, right? So the cylinder is rotating with an angular acceleration of, al of alpha. So the acceleration at this location is x alpha of the tube. Uh, so as the acceleration of the tube is x alpha, the acceleration of the mass will also be x alpha. So we can say mg minus the normal reaction equals mass times the acceleration, which is uh, x times alpha. And alpha, we can write it as a divided by r. So yeah, that's basically it. So now we can eliminate the normal reaction. Okay, and after eliminating the normal, you'll get the acceleration as this particular quantity. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. So yeah, I'll bring more videos later. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.